dog season coming along as the recovery process to take place. I'm really blessed. Um, I haven't had a bump in the road. I've been really lucky, and um, every day is a challenge, but at the same time, it's something I know I can beat. So I feel blessed and lucky, and I'm feeling good. It's just hard for me to watch, but uh, at the same time, I'm really proud of our team so far. And what are some of the things that you see that your team is doing better? Because so far, the other two teams that are top in the East right now, which is New York and Chicago, you guys have basically one game apart from each other, whether it's a win or a loss. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel your team has to do differently to kind of get back to the number one spot and stay there? I think our greatest asset is our chemistry. You know, the way we work together as a team and gel and rely on each other defensively and offensively. A lot of people see the offense because we're a well-balanced scoring team. But on defense, we help each other out. We know each other's strengths. We know each other's weaknesses. I think we sort of lost that a little bit in the past few games, but I think that we're really challenged to step up to the plate, get our chemistry back, and I think we'll respond. So during this downtime that you basically have, you've been doing a lot more TV work. So oh, you on the <laughs> You also have that vlog series with Grit Media. So is that something that you see yourself doing down the line? You're still young, so you have plenty of <laughs> mileage left on you, but is that something that you are exploring on purpose, per se? I think that a lot of times people think that with women's basketball, you sort of play, and then when you're done playing, you start working for your transition into the real world, per se, you know, with professionalism. But I think that you can start your transition now. You know, you can prepare yourself for opportunities off the court when you're a rookie, when you're a vet. Um, so I just have seen opportunities. I mean, everyone says, oh, you're in Connecticut. How is that like? You know, because Connecticut, you know, doesn't really have right. that much, yeah. even though we're lucky to be you know. Mm -hmm. well, I say it's the home of ESPN, so if there's an opportunity there, I'll go. Right. It's an opportunity to share my story so that maybe a fan can understand how they can get to the next level. I'll do it. So I'm just, I guess I say I'm a yes woman. I love doing <laughs> things. I love staying busy. After college, everything is like so much easier because you have more time. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, sure, let's do it. Right. So one thing, speaking of opportunities and taking advantage of things, so you recently did one of your great media videos was about you being Nigerian American. Mm -hmm. When your sister was here a few weeks ago with the Sparks, I talked to her about her upbringing and seeing if there was some kind of friction sometimes mm -hmm. with being a first generation. So your parents expect you to kind of go down one route, mm -hmm. but you decided to be an Absolutely. athlete. It's like a different route because I also am first generation as well. Okay. So I had this something that me and a lot of my friends have experienced. But she said that your parents basically wanted you guys to be most yeah. So talk a little bit about just the importance of being a diaspora, as mm -hmm. you call it. Yeah. Um, being a diaspora and having that Nigerian um, influence mm -hmm. and how it's helped you in your career, in your life. Absolutely. I think uh, being in the diaspora, you have the opportunity, not everyone sees it, but you have the opportunity to get the best of both worlds. You know, you get to see different cultures, you get to have a wider lens of the world. And so our parents taught me, I think what Nigerian culture has really instilled within us, is that no matter what you're doing, you do it to the best of your ability. Of course, we have the ideas of school, and success, you know, excel in school and go mm -hmm. work hard, do your homework and all that stuff, that's given. Um, but I think that they really helped us mold ourselves by applying that to our everyday life in the sense that we're also basketball players, do it to the best of your ability. Right. You know, you're a role model for the community. Be that to the best of your ability. So I think that's what that cultural um, responsibility of my parents have instilled in us has really trans like, translated to um, who we are as individuals and what we're trying to do as individuals as well. And this morning, the roster came out for the teams that are playing in the first NBA Africa yes. game in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. So they announced Team Africa mm -hmm. and Team World. Yeah, that's So awesome. there's a lot of top NBA players like mm -hmm. Chris Paul is going to be playing over the game yeah. beat a lot of people. So what are your thoughts on just seeing the NBA game expand and just the, bat, the U.S. basketball game yeah. expanding to a big platform like the continent? Yeah. I mean, I've, I try to go back to Nigeria as much as possible to let people... Because we, we have a lot of fans. summer too as well, yeah. so... We have a lot of fans there. Uh, my family does. Uh, it's sort of like anything that happens here. It's sort of tenfold back there because they're so excited about the potential of sports and women in basketball. So I think the game of basketball, the NBA game, for the development of basketball on the continent, but I honestly want to challenge them further, and hopefully they'll expand women's basketball as well, because I think that in that culture, you know, we were told here in the U U.S. that we shouldn't play based on our culture, um, just by my parents' peers, and I'm just so glad that my parents didn't listen to them and said, mm -hmm. you know what, we see something in this. So hopefully, you know, not only will the NBA game be great for men, but I think we should also bring a spotlight on women and young girls that are really trying to achieve in a place that sometimes can bring you down for different things like sports. I think that game is going to be so really, really awesome. I know, I, I know. I
seems pretty cool. Speaking of traveling, any summer plans for the rest of the summer? Oh, I don't know. You know me. <laughs> any anytime something comes up, I'm like, I'm down for it. So um, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I do think I want to take some me time. I've I've had a lot of me time, obviously. <laughs> I've had a lot of me time. But you're traveling but with the team. Before exactly. I think when the season's over, my sister and I, we've had a great time. You know, supporting each other throughout our careers. And I, I think we like said it. We should start doing like a sister trip. So mm -hmm. us four sisters are gonna do a sister trip. So we'll see. Anybody you're looking forward to playing next week in the Ulster game? Since you guys are hosting it, I want to see my sister. I want to see my sister. Hopefully, she gets named to All Star again, which will be a huge blessing and honor for our family. But I hope she comes because it's always fun. But my sister's in Connecticut. I'm biased though. <laughs> this is Shanae Ogumike, and you're watching BeyondTheW.com.